the final word for all that cricket fueled by Kookaburra Cricket. And I have Kookaburra superstar, queen of the World Cup, going to Lords on Sunday. Natalie Siver, how do you feel? You're in the World Cup final. It's a brilliant feel, feeling. Um, I was very nervous for the whole batting innings. I felt a bit sick, but um, yeah, brilliant to get get over the line. And um, Jenny, Fran, Anya, Sarah, Heather, like they all did so well. It was brilliant. Must have been pretty nervy in those last ten overs. A couple of quick wickets, uh, losing your captain to a full toss, and South Africa felt like they were in the lead in the game. What was it like in the change rooms and on the balcony? Um, yeah, a bit nervous. Um, my voice has actually gone a bit hoarse from all the shouting, so um, pardon me for that. But uh, yeah, we, we, we knew that um, we'd be able to get somewhere near, um, and because um, it's been brilliant that we've um, been able to kind of trust every batter down down to number ten. So um, yeah, we knew that Jenny Jenny could do that for us, and um, yeah, it's brilliant. You missed out today with the bat, took a couple of weeks with the ball, but two massive hundreds uh, and you really announced yourself on the, on the global stage, the first one of those, and then did some ridiculous trick shots second time around. How did it feel being the focus of so much media attention, both in the mainstream press and on social media? Um, I actually did it in the first game, but um, you missed it. So <laughs> so luckily it's gone a little bit um, unnoticed. Um, yeah, it's a bit crazy, really. Um, to think that, that that kind of thing has actually been called something. Um, so, yeah, it's crazy. Well, that's the Nat Meg to which we refer where Nat managed to put the ball between her legs as she was leaning back in the crease. I've seen Steve Smith do it before, but I've certainly never seen it in, in the women's game. Is that something you've been working on? Is that part of your repertoire? Something you actually Is it, is it a credible shot or was it something you just adapted to at the time? Uh, yeah, it's a bit of ad adaptation. Um, I've got myself in a pretty terrible position to be able to play a leg stump Yorker, so that's the only way I can get... Um, to make sure that it doesn't hit the stumps. So um, it's a bit, bit of a get out of jail shot, but um, it's working at the minute. Did you play it again today? How did that go behind your back pad? Um, no, I think I played that um, again today, yeah. One of my only scoring shots. <laughs> Look, you've had a fantastic tournament. And also, like the, the last year, I remember we spoke to you when you made that big 80 at Worcester, and it was all about giving you the confidence to clear the rope, and you did that multiple times on that occasion against Pakistan. Do you feel like you can pretty much take down any attack now? Um, yeah, I've, I do have a lot more confidence than I did um, a year ago, and it's um, yeah, just been brilliant to go out there and actually show what I can do, and not not be afraid that I'm going to get out or like, if I get out, then we're going to lose or anything like that. It's been brilliant to um, yeah get get that confidence and be able to express myself a little bit more. Have you had a chance to dream yet about what it would be like to stand on the balcony at Lords on Sunday with the trophy in your hand? Um, I did get a little bit excited last night, um, just at, like the thought of it, and then. Obviously, it, it happened, so we're going to Lords, and then I relived it about 10 minutes later, and I'm like, oh my goodness, we're actually going there. Yes, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's a dream come true. That you are, Natalie Siver. This is the final word for all that cricket. She's hit 200s in the tournament, taken plenty of wickets, so going to the World Cup final on Sunday. We'll, of course, be back ahead of all of that uh, for all the action when they play the winner of Australia and India tomorrow. Uh, until then, thanks, Nat. We'll see you soon. This is the final word, Adam Collins and Jeff Lemon for All Out Cricket, fueled by Kookaburra Cricket. At the end of an astonishing semi-final, India have bounced the world champions, Australia, out of the tournament. They'll face England on Sunday at a sold-out Lords. Jeff Lemon, it all came down to one woman today. We've seen her play some magnificent innings at domestic level and for a country before in our country, but Harman Preet Kaur has played without doubt the best innings in the history of one day cricket. Well, uh, Chamari Adapatu, we talked about her a few weeks ago, and then in this case, the stakes were even higher. The scores were similar. 178 not out the first time, 171 not out this time, off 115 balls. And the control, the aggression, the occasional elegance, the sometime brutality, it was just astonishing. And what can you do? This empty derby ground, as cold and desolate as the hearts of Australia's cricket team, because they just got absolutely trounced by someone who is white hot, who was transcendent, who was the lyrics to a Freddie Mercury song. She was a tiger shooting through the sky or something. She was on another planet. She was on her way to another planet. I don't even know how to express it. I'm full of adrenaline and I'm shivering and my teeth are chattering and it's all worthwhile just to have been here today. Yeah, they couldn't stop her now, that was for sure. They put on uh, 137 at one stage uh, between her and Deep Dee Sharma. She made 106 of them. She finished off, I'll read the numbers entirely, 171 off 120, off 115 balls, 20 boundaries, seven sixes. The bulk of those came in that partnership with Deep Dee and it was just brutality from the get-go. And Deepti didn't have to do anything. She just stood at the other end, got a single here and there, hit the occasional four, and then had the most 
hilarious vignette when uh, when Harmapreet was on 98. They went for a single. She called for the second. Deepti was like, no, no. Harmapreet said, yes, called her through. Deepti was nearly run out. Harmapreet thought she had been run out. Just absolutely lost her rag. <laughs> threw the helmet on the ground. Threw the bat away. Threw the gloves away. Gave her a tongue lashing. You know, how dare you, Rara? Uh, because she was worried about losing her partner, not she was worried about losing the run, I should add. And then it turns out Deepti was in the whole time anyway. So, not out, but uh, didn't actually get to wave to the crowd for the 100, but did 17 balls later for the 150. Now, that, that, sec, that third 50 came in 17 balls. To put again in some perspective that how quickly she put the foot down. But that's not to um, ignore the, the shortcomings of the Australian bowling lineup. The spin trio who'd done so well during this tournament, they copped the bulk of the um, action from Harmon Preet. But they lacked a six bowler or an option to throw the ball to, which meant that Elise Filani had to bowl one of the overs in the power play, and that didn't go so well. Well, she took a wicket but she also went for 19 runs, um, much the same as the end of that England game where she went for 14 or 15 and took a couple of wickets as well. So the wickets don't necessarily matter towards the end if you're getting absolutely smashed. And she was wide, sixes, fours, the whole lot, because Australia didn't have a bowling option. Coach Matthew Mott said it mightn't have made a difference, maybe, or it might have made a difference. You never know if you had an option to turn to. But the normally economical bowlers got smashed. Megan Shute went for seven and over plus. Jess Jonathan went at nine and over. They were just sent the full journey everywhere they went. So maybe another bowler could have been handy. Then with the bat, Australia had that massive mountain to climb and they never looked likely. They were three for 21 early. Meg Lanning got done by an absolute snorter from Goswami, who's obviously one of those two players alongside Mathali Raj, who played in that 2005 World Cup final for India. And then, well, for a time there, it was actually Vellani and Perry who turned the screws on India the other way. For a period of time there, it did look like Australia were back in the contest. That's right. Vellani, top scorer of her career, 75, played really well, hit straight down the ground and so on. But trying to come back from three for 21, it was always really too much for her to do so she got them some momentum going but then when she was out right at the cusp when they were about to take the power play that set things back Perry couldn't really get going she was you know battling with her strike rate battling to get singles at times and uh, and in the end there was just too much to do so Alex Blackwell came in played a absolutely incredible hand at the end but really that just flattered Australia she smashed 90 or 50 odd balls but it, it wasn't really getting them in the contest they were still needing you know 50 off the last four overs they weren't going to be in it but it made the margin look not as bad as perhaps it was and maybe for Australia's sake they needed the margin to look bad because they were a long way off the pace today yeah any other day that Alex Blackwell innings down at uh, down at number six or number five she came in wasn't it would have been enough to have won the game in this in this contest we've seen we've seen 90 odds win plenty of games in this competition but not to be today casting forward to Lords. We speak to Nat Siver a bit later on about her day coming up at Lords and that magnificent win that England had a couple of days ago to overcome South Africa in a true nail-biter. It's the host England versus these plucky Indians and what this could do for Indian women's cricket. Mathali Raj said it could be revolutionary. It's incredibly exciting. It, it, it's pretty much prime time in India. They've all been watching this game today. They'll be watching that final for sure. Playing at Lords, it's sold out 27,000, maybe 28 now. They released some extra members seats. They've sold out. Everyone in their dog's going to be down there. The dogs will be disguised as people wearing those red and yellow jackets and the hats. But, you know, don't let them fool you. They're actually dogs. Uh, they'll be in there. You know, everyone you're drinking champagne out of bowls. The whole works. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. So it, it's it's such a big thing for this game to have a sold out final at Lords on TV around the world. If you miss it, you're an idiot. Every possible metric, World Cup 2017 has been so successful in terms of eyeballs watching it, ears listening to it on the radio, website clicks the works. It's been a crack out. We've got the final at Lords on Sunday. We'll be there for all that cricket fueled by Kookaburra Cricket on the final word. Adam Collins and Jeff Lemon, we can't wait. We'll see you there. The bat that I'll be using for the 2017-18 season is the Ghost. As you can see, it's a beautiful piece of wood. Great mid-sweet spot and it really sort of complements the way that I play.